It's all these old trucks and uh, army vehicles just laying upside down, fifth wheels, trailers. Last time on Races to Places, Basil and Lyndon did a bit of showboating. Yesterday afternoon. Uh-huh. Look, many stones. Oh, wow, this looks nice. You like stones? Yeah, yeah. We slept in a local's house, a local called Jose. He let us stay in his uh, little house here. See the bedroom. There's only one bedroom. Ruan occupied the bedroom. So this is Ruan's bed. And this is Heiko's bed. Morning Heiko. Morning. Ready to go I see. Yeah. And then uh, we got the toilet with no door, so we had to take it in turns pooing while the others waited outside. In the kitchen, this was my bedroom. And Ruan's making coffee this morning. So Ruan Heiko, you're heading back to Namibia today. Um, it's been a been a short but fun ride. Uh, yeah. Glad you guys could come and share it with me. And uh, you know, it's a it's a ride that I was going to do on my own, uh, but it was a pleasure having you two along, and uh, we had a we had a good time together with the locals and everything. These guys were on small bikes, on 500s, which is absolutely the right bike for them. You know, they realised that they had big bikes before, 1190s, 990s, and things. And now they're on the little 500s because they like getting out there in these remote places and uh, you can see that the less weight on the bike really helps for yeah. you guys and uh, you know see a lot of people struggling on big bikes um, but uh, for me it's quite easy riding a big bike but you know if you're not if you don't ride as much and you haven't got as much experience then the lighter the bike the easier it is yeah. what do you think Ron? well yeah uh, i think you've hit the nail on the head and uh, just uh, speaking for both myself and Aiko, I think you're, you're telling an absolutely awesome story, inspiration to a lot of people and uh, it's been a privilege being a, you know, a little part of that story. It's been a, it's been a fantastic ride and, and all the best for you. Yeah, cheers. Time to load up the luggage. As you can see, Aiko is using Enduristan, which is the same as Linden's. If you would like more information on the luggage, you'll find it at lindenposkitracing.com. Well, all good things must come to an end, they say. And this means there'll be no more luxury camp food for Linden, as Heiko too and Rowan both leaving today. It's been great to have you on the show. So everywhere I go, I always manage to hunt out these really cool local workshops and this is no different. This is a truck repair shop, let me show you. Uh, they have everything to straighten the wheels. Look at this wheel here, they will repair it. Look, my father repair it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, don't have, we Ooh. repair it. Yeah. Look, my father repair yeah. it. And the machine, many machines. <laughs> The drilling machines, grinding, all the parts. It's a real shop here. There's a small lathe. So uh, this is Jose's Land Rover. Land Rover from England. <laughs> yeah, from England. 
many modifications going on here changing the chassis yeah yes before it's ah. working here before it's here I and now here now we put here so we changed the steering wheel to the other side left hand drive lander over here <laughs> now this i find very interesting a look around this guy's truck workshop This one? No. You want? Yeah. It's okay? Good. Mango for later. <laughs> this is your dad's your dad's on there. Yeah? Nice. Here I put the light. The light from the machine. Thank you. Goodbye. So just, um, Jose is just taking me up to a place called Tundavala. It's a really strange place here, look with all the stones and the block paved road up to it. Um, it's a big drop off to a valley and uh, he said in the warp the, uh, they used to throw the bodies or throw the enemies off into the bottom. So we're just walking down to Tundavala. It's probably not the best day today because of the weather and the mist, but hopefully we can uh, show you really what it's like here. We're definitely up above the clouds here. This place is called Tundavala Gap, which is located 18 kilometers from Lubango, Angola. So normally there is an amazing view off the end here, and even with the drone it would have been spectacular. But today it's not meant to be, so um, I'm going to have to ask Mikey, the video editor, to maybe find some stock footage of Tundavala, maybe some still photos, and share with you what it would be like. The altitude of the rim exceeds 2,200 meters. You can see where the Russians were shooting him in the face, in the chest. Wow. The city of Lubango. Lubango. Lubango, Angola. What a view from up here. So, in front of me is um, a white car with five immigration officers in. Uh, they've just pulled me over and taking my passport so I have to go with them because they've got my passport getting pulled up by a car full of five people in uniforms and pretty much uh, took my passport and drove off with it managed to follow them and to the immigration station finally got sorted out they can let me go which is good actually been really friendly so what could have been a bad situation actually turned out okay so let's get back going again obrigado thank you crashed plane here. It's like literally as it landed. It's gonna be really, really slow like this. It's so sketchy. Might as well having another lie down. Oh man. Even with all his riding experience, Lyndon can get caught out. Thankfully, Lyndon is uninjured and Basil has just light damage. Wow. The 
road is not passable here, not on my own. Um, it's just too dodgy going over here. Basil, if he falls in there, ah, the weight of Basil. Look. And if there's more of these along the way, it's just too much. So we'll try this other road, see if it goes around. So it looks like this has not been used for a long time. All these old trucks and uh, army vehicles just laying upside down, fifth wheels, trailers. See them all just rusting away. The road, this is a main road, believe it or not. It's going to take me a few days at this speed. I've contemplated going back, but I'd really like to get through this way. The only downside is it's rain season. This road would be treacherous when wet. So I just uh, stopped here to say a few words. Uh, and the road doesn't look like much, but it's in the morning, it's dry. When it rains, this is just ridiculously slippy. Um, got bald tyres as well. You've got these huge water holes everywhere in the road. Just sliding all over. I mean, look at the front of my front tire on the bike. It's just like it's just like a solid ring of mud. The problem is, it's the unknowns. It's the unknowns beyond this point. It's 600 kilometers as the crow flies to the border, and you know everything I read say it's impassable in rain season. And uh, I don't know. I really want to do it, but. There's just a few things, one thing after the other. Whoa. Telling me not to do it. And uh, I'm such an adventurous guy and I want to do it. But I'm thinking back to that time in Thailand when I was uh, sitting on the log, sweating my ass and I had to turn back, you know. Who cares that I had to turn back? Nobody, only me. I could keep going, but what if there's a river crossing that's flooded because of the rain and I can't get through? What if there's a huge water hole? What if, what if, what if, what if, and I'm all on my own, you know? And, uh, wow, it's just so hard, because I want to do it. But honestly, I think the best thing to do is to turn back and I hate doing it. Ugh, I hate going back. Now this is a side of Lyndon you don't very often see. And it's hard for me to watch his frustration. From Quito across to Coemba and then from Coemba the plan was to go to Luena here um, but unfortunately this road was pretty bad and not very well run and had a problem with my front wheel so I made the decision that I would backtrack uh, the plan was actually going to be to come all the way over here to Luakana and then all the way across to the Jimby border crossing over here but this was not possible or it was possible but it could have been potentially dangerous so I went back to Quito and headed all the way down to Minong from Minong I then headed south to Kiundi, Kunda, and then back down to 
the Namibian border where I would head across to get a new front wheel in Zambia. Next time on Races to Places, we're visiting a crocodile farm. Oh, he's a big boy, yeah? Hey everyone, I just want to say a massive thank you to you all for watching my media and for all the great comments that I receive every single day. Please keep them coming. I'm just going to share with you my Patreon page. Patreon is a membership based platform that gives creators like me the opportunity to continue cr to create the media that you love to watch. For just a few dollars a month, I can give you priority viewing, I can give you special features, informative posts about the things that you want to know. It creates a platform for interaction between you, the viewer, and me, the creator. Now, a few dollars a month might not seem like a lot to you, but for me, collectively, it makes a huge difference. So please check out the link at the bottom of the page, and I appreciate any contribution you can make to make my job sustainable. In return for that, I promise to keep creating great media that you love, dreaming up new projects, filming it and sharing it with you all. Thanks. <laughs>